Good day and welcome back to the podcast. Today we have a question and the question is, should I and my family be worried about the recent electoral commission data breach in the UK? Now it's a valid question and it's a valid question because we have um, breaches happening all around the world. But now uh, for those of us on the platform who are in the UK, we have um, a data breach that has been announced uh, and it, it, it's the Electoral Commission that have made this announcement. And I know that they're required to make this announcement based on what we used to call EU GDPR re regulations, but the GDPR regulations mandate that they need to tell us. And from what I've gathered from the news, um, the first um, noticed, um, you know, exposure of data on their platforms, their servers in 2021. And of course, they um, had the breach itself, from what I gathered from the information I, I read in 2022. And of course, they've done um, a lot of um, things to mitigate um, the, the, the issue that they've found and prevent it from happening again. But a data breach happened. And when it did happen, the question we should ask as a family is what information of mine was exposed? Was it exposed? And what should I do to keep myself and my family safe? And so that's why this is a crucial video. I want us to go to the ICO who are in charge of uh, privacy and data security and see exactly what um, they say um, the electoral register um, holds, the information it holds. And if you can see the... Um, the screen let me see if i can zoom in i can't zoom in so we're just gonna have to look at it that way so you can zoom in on your side but basically under the what is the elector electoral register it says people el eligible to vote in uk elections and referenda are required to register to vote so if you don't um register you can't vote in the uk and it goes on to say their names and addresses are held. That's crucial because it's on their website. It says names and addresses are held on the electoral register. And of course, what that means um, for those um, of you who may be wondering what exactly um, these, you know, uh, rogues that have infiltrated the electoral um, uh, commission's platform, what data of mine do they have must be the question that I hear you ask, you know? So it's important that you and your family know what has happened with your information and what, if at all, um, they have, the rogues have in their possession. Okay. So we're going to discuss potential risks and I, I, I'm hoping that this is not going to be uh, uh, um, scary for you. Ultimately, if you do what we will advise later on, um, you should be pretty okay. So first and foremost, I need to remind you again, re remind you that this is not your fault. You gave your um, data to the Electoral Commission um, because that's what we need to do to vote in the UK, okay? So you've done well. Unfortunately, um, possibly um, for a lack of um, protection or controls on the Electoral com Commission side, your data has been exposed. But that's not the problem. The problem, we're not going to worry about that. The data breach has happened. Now, how do we protect our homes? How do we protect our kids? How do we protect ourselves, okay? So when a rogue gets hold of data like your name and address, it's, it's, 
it's information it's sensitive information i don't want you to ever you know um, relegate that those two those in two important details as little information because the rogue generally builds profiles if they have a name they have a, an address the next thing they will need is a date of birth and possibly a phone number and usually that is enough information to create another you okay that information your name address potentially your date of birth um and maybe your mobile number or a landline number that is potentially enough information to create another you uh, like a clone what um, in the technical world um, is referred to as identity theft okay so an identity thief can use a number of methods to find out your personal information of course with the data breach we're going to assume that they already have your name and address and they can use that information to do things like open a bank account take out credit cards and apply for you know um benefits in your name so someone who knows your address may be able to access your your mail or even change your mailing address and i i mean this wholeheartedly and that's why we must be you know super careful with our data i'm reminding us again that this data breach is not our fault but generally we must have the mindset that our data is important and it needs to be under lock and key so we just don't give out information you know anyhow all right so the the um if if a, a, a thief can get hold of your mailing address or your your name in this case you know a wide variety wide variety of personal information about you including medical data and financial records could follow and how do they get their hands on this it's hard to tell but like i said they build profiles so they'll get little from information here they get little information there and perhaps the medical data and financial records and all that you know that will kind of give you a comprehensive um information about you all that information can be gathered over time and they are patient these rogues are patient so a data breach that has happened now you may not see any impact of that data breach in the now but doesn't mean that they didn't do anything or they don't have that information and so we whilst they're making up their mind or hoping to gather more information about you we can do things to protect ourselves okay hence the reason why we are sharing this video all right so simple details such as your full name date of birth and address can be used to commit identity theft or identity um, fraud often criminals don't need to look very hard to get other crucial information like our phone number where and when we were born etc but armed with this information these rogues like i mentioned can use your identity details to open bank accounts open credit cards loans benefits other goods in your name take over your existing accounts they can even take out mobile phone contracts obtain genuine documents such as passports and driving license in your name i'm not saying that these are guaranteed to happen but potentially this is what they're building up for they just want to get at you okay like i mentioned in a previous video they're not friendly they're not friends all they are out to do is to satisfy their own selfish desires and plans okay so as this is a breach that is not entirely your fault i let you off but i would want to give you advice who am i to let you off <laughs> forget that you simply have to be extra vigilant whilst engaging online okay so that's the general general remedy that i will offer extra vigilance okay 
things like not responding to un unsolicited text messages, emails, or phone calls. Because it could be a rogue look looking to get more information other than the name and address and more information about you to combine with what they already have. They, seriously, people pay a lot of money, you know, or spend a lot of time just trying to defraud you. And that's what the online, um, you know, uh, the online, the tool, the internet, that's what it has provided. It's provided a job for rogues. So don't respond to unsolicited text messages, emails, or phone calls, okay? We have a, a, another advice that we would love to give you. Compile a contact list of friends and acquaintances. We shared a video and I'll put it in the, you know, info card. Compile a contact list of friends and acquaintances so that you can filter out rogue communications. Okay, because you that way, when a phone call comes or a text message comes, it will come from a contact, you know, that way you're not exposed to the filth that will come in unsolicited. So compile a very robust contact list. Make sure when you get your your the list from your friends, you are, you know, saving them as contacts. And over time, you build a robust contact list. Okay. The next advice we'll give is that you should enable two-factor authentication, okay? We've also got a, a video on that, so look at the info card. This will help prevent rogues from gaining access to your crucial and sensitive accounts, okay? These are things that you and I have to do, you know, in general. We shouldn't wait for a data breach to happen. But just for those who have taken their eye off the ball, this video was birthed or is here for you, okay? I hope this has been of value to you. If it has, please share it with friends and family. Like this video if it's been beneficial. And of course, subscribe to the platform. I've been your host, Lawrence Edem. Until next week, God bless and goodbye.